Tom Matty, let's look again at that touchdown run by Musso. Here's Lasso. They're coming right along the line of scrimmage. Picks him up right around the neck, tries to bulldog him down, but Musso had the momentum going for him, got in the end zone. So it's 7-7. Seven seven. Bob Thomas kicking off for the Chicago Bears. Randy Rich will wait for it at the 4. Up to the 10, the 15, to the 19, and down he goes. Excellent coverage that time by Art Best. And they picked up this year from the Los Angeles Rams, a former Notre Dame Kent State standout. You know, we may have a season of upsets. I'll tell you one thing. Atlanta, after they lost Barkowski down there, they didn't think they are going to have anything, but it's a 10-6 ball game right now. Yeah, there's the brother of Steve. That's right. Nick Meyer scoring down there. And so now at the 19-yard line, just short of it, the Lions have it, 7-7, 3.44 to go, first quarter. Greg Landry, the quarterback. Horace King, the only set running back behind him. And this is King. King already with eight carries. Moves the ball out to the 21-yard line, and he is hit hard. A big hole opened up there real quick, but it closed up real quick, too. Craig Clemens, if you talk about a tough physical secondary, the Bears have to rate among the tops. They will really come after you. They like to hit. They're aggressive. Last year, they thought that this would probably be their weakest part of their game, but last year, they came through for them, and, and they were the big hitters. Uh, I think there's only about four passes, touchdown passes thrown on both the corners for the whole season. Second down, seven for the Lions. Again, only one set right back. He's in motion now. Horace King. Landry rolls that way. Scrambling. He's got outside running room to the 30-yard line, and he smartly gets out of bounds, and he has a first down for the Detroit Lions. And now there is a difference in Landry. He used to challenge people when he ran the ball. And that's when you get hurt. Get that first down, get out of bounds. That way you're protecting yourself and you're also protecting your team. Well, he's coming off of quite a year. He was second in the NFC in passing last year. Jack Party looking over. His defensive core having a tough time against this running game of the Detroit Lions. They're using a lot of the rollout, the semi rollout stuff to get the movement of that defensive line, and then they're coming back with counteraction on it. J.D. Hill, number 86 at the top of the screen, the former Buffalo Bills standout. Ray Jarvis, the leading receiver, last year at the bottom. Horace King straight ahead, nothing fancy as he moves the ball three yards to the 33-yard line. And he's going to be a tired young man by the time this first quarter comes to a close. You know, it gets awful hot down in that field, especially on this kind of turf. Wally Chambers there to make the tackle. Chambers has just been having a tough time with that knee, hasn't he, Tom? He's been having, you know, off and on he has these nagging injuries. And when you're not 100%, you know, you get out there and you just don't feel right. And uh, I think he's probably one of the best defensive players in the league when he's healthy. He was all pro in 75 and 76, the UPI Defensive Player of the Year. Second down, seven yards to go. Landry on a delay draw to Horace King, and look at King pick his way. Horace King to the 38-39 yard line. He's still a yard short of that first down. And Tom Hicks, who was in there, the former Illinois standout, making the tackle. They'll mark it to 38. It'll be two yards short of that first down and third down coming up. King has great ability to run to daylight, get the open places. The hole opened up, and he picked it real well. The thing is that he broke to the outside on that one, and uh, he thought he might be able to get that first down. Sometimes you're better off just dunk at that head down there and try to get it. King last year gained 325 yards. Third down, a long two. A minute 41 to go in this first quarter. Landry to King again, and he breaks the tackle. He's short of the first down. He did not make it. He is short by a half yard. He needed to make it inside the 40, but did not. Jim Osborne made sure of that. He really spun him around. Fourth down coming up. That's good defense. That's when you have to stop in those third down sh short yardage situations. Look at that knit cap that Wayman Bryant wears. He always He's a superstitious that. guy. Everybody has different things. You know, Gary, one of the things that Detroit's had a lot of problems with is their punting game. Uh, and it's really hurt him during the exhibition season. But I think they found someone in this hoops kit. Well, His first punt was 49 yards. Another low snap. Now, this is a wobbly kick coming up as Schubert at the 30, and he's going nowhere. I tell you, Hoops is having a tough time. Two times the ball has been snapped almost on the ground. He kicked very well for the Cardinals in the preseason, and they picked him up on waivers. 7-7 seven, seven our score. 53 seconds remaining now in this first quarter. Hey, next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the Trenton 150. And I'll tell you, Tom, they've got Indy-type cars in that USAC event. Some outstanding 
competitors, Gordon, Don, John Cock, Mario Andretti. Boy, Andretti having a great year. He sure is. Next week on the CBS Sports Spectacular, next Saturday, this is Roland Harper. Harper across the 30, up to the 33-yard line. Roland Harper, last year the leading receiver for this team. He also gained 625 yards. That was second best only, of course, to Walter Payton. Uh, the thing about this is great is that Walter Payton and Harper complement each other. You know, Payton's the kind of kid that'll stick his nose in there, get the key block for Harper to spring him, let him get this kind of yardage. Second down, a pickup of five on that last play. Scott and also Steve Schubert, number 85, come flanked to the bottom of your screen. Two set running backs now. Payton and Harper behind Abilene. This is Payton. Payton trying to get outside. Paul Newmoff was over there. The left side linebacker, he dragged him down. Newmoff has been battling a lot of problems, particularly an Achilles tendon. You know, you come off Achilles tendon like that, it's, it's tough because it takes a lot of training. So that's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Detroit Lions 7, the Chicago Bears 7. try and forget the 10th largest life insurance company in America, Lincoln National Life. We're easy to remember. What are you doing, cookie face? I'm checking the air pressure in my Goodrich radials, snuggle bunny. At midnight? On our honeymoon? We've got a long drive to Niagara Falls tomorrow. If we don't have the right amount of air in our tires, it could be unsafe. And my Goodrich dealer told me the tires would last longer. Goodrich? You should have married that Goodrich blimp! Tires you can trust. BF Goodrich. The other guys. But honey... What? Goodrich doesn't have a blimp. Port of Call, Caribbean. your local recruiter or call toll-free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Walter Payton of 76 yards, one of those, a 73-yard run. Now, he's out of the ball game right now, and John Gilliam has replaced one of the wide receivers, and John Musso is in. So Gilliam, who they just picked up from the Atlanta Falcons, is flanked to the top of the screen. Avellini back to throw. It's Musso almost picked off. Johnny Musso at the 40-yard line and Randy Rich. Now, you probably haven't heard about Randy Rich. He's a free agent fine out of the University of New Mexico, 5'10", 175. And he's seen a lot of activity. He's been returning punts. There he goes back for this anticipated punt on a fourth and four. There's Abilene off the sideline. More and more ball clubs, Gary, are going to that third down situation. Where it's a uh, third and three, third and four, where they're trying to hit that halfback coming out. They give an option on the linebacker. Randy Rich and Luther Blue, a flyer. A rookie out of Iowa State is back. Here's the kick by Bob Parsons. He got good height on that one. Luther Blue's going to catch it at the 25. He bobbled the ball. Picking it up at the 12 yard line, the Chicago Bears. And coming away with it is Steve Schubert, who feels punch for the Bears. And Schubert was down there very quickly. And what a break for the Chicago Bears. Luther Blue, the young rookie from Iowa State, just couldn't come up with it. Now, where are they going to mark the ball? I believe they're going to mark it back outside the 15 to the 16. Luther Blue just can not seem to get this. He, he, just, he just doesn't get himself under control. I think he's starting to look where he's going to run at. Loses that ball, takes a big bounce. And boy, there he is right there. Well, Luther Blue has had some success in running the ball, Tom. It's not a case the first time he's been back here. He had a 69-yard return in the preseason on a punt. And you All can't right. blame it on the sun. That's right. <laughs> From the 16-yard line, the Bears with a major opportunity. First down. And they give to the 15-yard line. A gain of one. Walter Payton just didn't have any running room that time. One thing about Payton, he'll never give up. He'll fight you for every inch. Second down, a gain of one. Second and nine. Schubert, number 85, coming into the huddle now for the Chicago Bears. They're sending the play information in through the wide receivers. Jack Pardee's crew. 
Last year they won 10 to 3 the first game against Detroit and then lost later in the year to the Lions 14 to 10. Second and nine. Abilene back. Greg Latta, a flag on the play as Latta is knocked out of bounds inside the 10. He was the leading receiver in the preseason, catching 14 passes. Charlie West rammed him out of bounds, but we've got a penalty coming up. This could be an interesting call. They had the man in motion coming down. And that's what it is, illegal motion against the Chicago Bears. So they'll bring that play back. Latta has always been an excellent receiver, Tom. It's been his blocking the suspect, but I understand he's improved there. In talking with uh, with some of the coaches from Chicago, they said that he is. That's one of the things that they really try to concentrate on in training camp this year was to be able to get him to block a little bit better. Five yard step off back to the 20 yard line. Offense illegal motion number 85. That's Steve Schubert who checked in with that play. Let's pick it up. You can see him coming in right here right now and boom. He's making his move before the snap of the ball. Well they picked it up that replay didn't it. I'll tell you that's great to be able to have those things up here and watch with him. Second down now 14. Brian Beischnagel has now checked in as a wide receiver. We have a collision in the backfield. Peyton ran into Avellini and then he ran into those gray and blue people from Detroit. Charlie Weaver Jim Mitchell. Little mix up, but I guess, Tom, you might expect that in the first game of the season. Well, they're going to have some. Those are the kind of mistakes you like to eliminate, Gary. Uh, but, the, you know, Detroit's fired up in there. They know that this is a momentum part of the game. When they come up with a big play like this, where you have a, a fumbled punt, uh, it can change the momentum of a team by just, you know, capitalizing on a big mistake like this. At the 22, it's now third and 16. Last year, Detroit was second in the NFC in overall defense. They gave up only 25 touchdowns. And we're going to have a timeout now called by the Chicago Bears. So the Bears, with Bob Avellini walking to the near sideline. Avellini, the third-year man from Maryland. His 19th start for the Chicago Bears. He's at 500, winning nine and losing nine. A good leader. And this year, Manley Mike Phipps for that starting quarterback job. 7-7 our score as we have timeout on the field. Cold night, Bob. Did you put in the Presto antifreeze? Presto! Presto! Who needs Presto? Presto, Presto. You need Presto. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Presto, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze-ups. Prestone, Prestone, you need Prestone. Are you still chained to? Gotcha. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor lets you walk away, free from nicks and cuts. Its 36 surgical steel rotary razor blades are safely protected inside three floating heads to give you a comfortable shave that's razor close, razor smooth for up to three weeks on a single charge. The rechargeable Norelco Rotary Razor. It lets you walk away from gotcha. Well, a little color and excitement here. The Honey Bears, Tom Addy. Oh, yes. Let me tell you what, all the teams around the league now, between that and the Texas Bells and Oakland girls out there, they're really adding a little bit more spice to the game of football. Okay. <laughs> Third down, 16 from the 22. And, Tom, you feel like this is a big play for the Chicago Bears. Well, I'll tell you what. If they want to keep this momentum going in their favor, they've got to come up with a big play. Here's Avellini over the middle. John Gilliam. Oh! John Gilliam had it for a moment. Boy, what a way that would be to break into the lineup for the Chicago Bears. He had it. He juggled it. Charlie West was defending on the play. This is great protection. Abilene, this is what Avellini needs. He steps right up in there, steps right up into the pocket, throws it right over. Gillian's right there, goes up for it. Charlie West is right there, just enough to deflect it. You know, Gilliam good, good joined this team on Wednesday, Tom, so he's had to digest an awful lot of football. Now, he's been around a few years. He's a pretty smart football player. This is going to be a 40-yard field goal attempt by Bob Thomas holding his Beisnagel. And that kick is wide left. It veered off to the left. So Thomas, who's kicked very effectively in the preseason, misses the 40-yard field goal attempt. So now with 13-12 to go before halftime, it's all tied up 7-7. Hey, Mom! Oh, hiya, Sammy! Stop 
sitting around. Mom, let's take a ride in my new Ford pickup. All right, let me drive. Hope I can handle it. This is the one that's built tough with Ford's exclusive twin I-beam suspension and a new four-speed overdrive option. Far out. And extensive rust-fighting materials on underbody parts. What you think, Mom? You may think I'm off my rocker. This Ford is tough. Of all Ford trucks registered over the last 12 years, 93 out of 100 are still on the job. Panasonic invites you to take a picture of a voice with a Panasonic cassette tape recorder. country. Things was a lot different than it is now. All with built-in mics. Some with built-in radios. There are pocket models. It should last another 50 years. And even some that record in stereo. Say something. Come on, say something. So take a picture of a voice with Panasonic. Say something, bark. A woman doctor is assaulted by her patient, but she won't call in the police. That's what baffles Rafferty. Patrick McGowan stars as Rafferty, tomorrow night. Big Noah Jackson being attended to, getting some tape on that shoe. Third-year man out of Temple, 273-pounder. Dexter Bussey, the running back now, behind Greg Landry after that missed field goal attempt. Here's Greg Landry, back to throw. He's got protection, near side, and complete to J.D. Hill. J.D. Hill, who last year was sidelined with a knee injury, but what a performer he has been. He had 52 catches in 1972 for the Buffalo Bills. He could really be quite an addition to this Detroit team. Well, he adds that speed that they need. But it's interesting, you know, this is the second time he's had that knee operated on. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's sometimes it's tough to come back from those knee injuries. You're always hesitant about it, but it doesn't look like he's having any problems. You had, what, three yourself? Three of them. <laughs> First down now on that last pass completion. Landry again with only one set running back. It's Dexter Bussey, and Bussey's out to the 35, 36-yard line. Bussey, a big running back. 6'1", 210-pounder out of Texas Arlington. 858 yards last year. Wally Chambers there to make the tackle. Second down and seven. Detroit with a new offensive coordinator this year, and Ed Hughes, who came over from Dallas, and you can see that flex at the line, the old Dallas Cowboy tactic. Not only have they have Ed, Ed Hughes, but just recently they signed Earl Morrill as a consultant to sit up in the press box and help. He comes in on weekends for him. He's up there today. Just hired this week. Second and seven, Landry back. Good protection. J.D. Hill overthrown at the 50-yard line, but good protection. Now recall this. Last year, the Lions gave up 67 sacks. But they're doing a much better job in the early going. You know, speaking of protection, this is what the quarterback really likes. I'll tell you when. You know, if he has the time, he can set up. I think he threw this ball, you know, over the guy's head intentionally because there was such good coverage. But he's got all the time in the world to throw that ball. Well, I tell you, though, when number 60, Wally Chambers comes after you, I'd get rid of that ball, too. <laughs> I wouldn't want him hitting me. Third down, seven now for the Lions. Seven to seven, our score. Twelve and a half minutes to go before halftime. There's another new formation. Look at this. In motion comes Horace King to the near side. Landry back again. He's in trouble. And Landry inside the 25-yard line as Billy Newsom. And Tom Maddy, he was a teammate with you on that 70 Super Bowl team. He sure was. A big, strong, likable guy. Really a super. Here's his formation again. Watch the, watch the pressure coming in. Here comes Big Billy Newsom, grabs him. So it's going to bring up now fourth down 18. The ball back to the 25. And Billy Newsom, who's been quite a performer through the years for Baltimore, New Orleans, the Jets, picked up from Buffalo for a trade. Low snap again. They're having trouble with the snap. And Hoops hits one. Schubert going back to the 30 yard line. He falls down, and he's going to get up at the 35, 40. Look at this to the 50, to the 40, and he may go all the way. Steve Schubert, touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Steve Schubert fell down, and look at him. Is he excited? He is mauled by Brian Bashnagel as Steve Schubert averted what looked like a disastrous situation, and the speed of Steve Schubert, a young man out of the University of Massachusetts, really evident on that sideline effort. Schubert, I'm, take a, a look at your man. Take a take a look at the, the the ball players themselves. Here it comes again. I think he just sort of sets them up, blows them to sleep, breaks down, breaks the tackle right there. That was a key part of it right there. Cuts back to the inside, follows his blockers, then he just puts a burst of speed right here. 
Number 45, who's no slow guy. Ray Jarvis is chasing him down that sideline. He just puts it on. Boy, big plays for the Bears. 70-yard return for Schubert earlier. Peyton went 73 yards. A kick by Bob Thomas. And the Chicago Bears, who started rather slowly, have now taken a 14-7 lead. 11 minutes and 48 seconds. And there's a happy Steve Schubert. Practice all you can, because saving a few seconds may save a few lives. But now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. The beer. A rain slick highway. A skid and a potentially major accident becomes a minor incident. Thanks to a crash barrier with a shatterproof plastic nose cone, a unique plastic developed and supplied by Phillips Petroleum. Developing new plastics while making fine products for your car, that's performance. From Phillips Petroleum, the performance company. Well, the big play offense right now, the Chicago Bears. They had a 73-yard run by Walter Payton that set up their first touchdown, and now Steve Schubert just took a punt 70 yards, and the Bears have taken a 14-7 lead. Bob Thomas to kick off. Randy Rich, the middleman, standing at the five-yard line. And he hits a line drive. Who's got it? Randy Rich picks it up at the 25-yard line to the 30, and he comes right back up to the 35. He fumbled the ball, but I believe the Lions have recovered. Not a bad effort that time by Randy Rich. Made a good come, a cutback on it. Broke back to the inside. Kansas City and New England. Well, they're deadlocked right now. Boy, that Grogan Stingley pair. I'll tell you, you know, New England's a team to watch in our in, 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 the, in the division in the East there. Between that and Baltimore and Burt Jones, they've got they've got some good football teams over there. Kansas City with a big offense. First down now, just outside the 35-yard line. J.D. Hill to the bottom of the screen. Ray Jarvis to the top. 14-7, Chicago. Horace King, the only set running back. Here's Landry on first down, wanting to throw. He's setting up the screen. And there's nobody there. That just didn't develop, Tom. I don't know what happened, but nobody deployed in that area. No, 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 it was a tight end screen. They're using that tight end offense, and they're trying to set up that tight end. Now, what's he putting on his hands there? They threw something into him. Landry rubs it on. Maybe some stick -em. Yeah, that stick -em stuff that keeps that ball in there. I so, can never use that stuff. What happens with it is when you first use it, it can, you can hold the ball real well, but then after, you know, after a while, it gets real smooth and makes your hands even more slippery. So now, second and ten, just across the 35. Again, Hill is flanked to the bottom. Jarvis to the top. 11.33 to go before half. Landry gives off, and here comes Horace King, and King's out to the 40-yard line. And boy, is he shoved backwards. Don Reeves leading the charge from Texas Tech. Young man who has come back from some injury problems himself to really do quite a job for this Bear Club. If Greg can uh, continue to keep his game plan, which is, you know, to be able to run against Chicago, uh, which he did in that first series when he went down for 80 yards and used up a lot of the a lot of the clock time. Uh, he should stick with it. It's been successful. King comes out of the game. He's carried the ball 13 times for 69 yards, and Dexter Bussey has replaced him. There's your down and distance. Third and five. Landry back again. Lots of time. This is Dexter Bussey, and he can't get it. Fourth down coming up. Bussey looked like he had maybe enough running room there to pick up the first down. Could have grabbed that thing, look, looked it into his hands, as they used to tell me. Bussey last year catching 28 passes, so he is a fine receiver. Greg Landry, who last year hit 58% of his passes, 17 touchdowns, will walk off the field. He's three for seven today, 38 yards. Virgil Livers will now go back deep for the Bears. Mitch Hoops, who's been busy, will kick again. His last kick was 45 yards, and there's the first good snap he's had. Wobbly kick, Livers. He never fair catches the ball. He comes up to the 35, and Livers to the 37-yard line. At 71 returns by Livers, no fair catches on any of them. <laughs> That's what you call guts. It's a gutsy move. 
or he's, you know, or he, or he's crazy. You know, I don't know. <laughs> hey, look ahead next week, would you, Tom? We have some dandies coming up. New Orleans, of course, will play this Detroit Lion Club. Chicago, St. Louis, not going to get easier for the Bears. They met in the preseason. St. Louis winning that one, but who knows on that particular game. St. Louis got that big, strong offensive line. And how about the Giants in Dallas? Look out for those Giants. Philadelphia making a return. The Rams having a tough time today. First down, Abilene on a draw to Walter Payton. 40, 45, 50. He is trying to get a block by Scott, and he's all the way to the 41-yard line. Walter Payton just exploded off the ball. Paul Newboff making the tackle. There it is again. Just a quick draw. Payton is picking his holes. There he is. He's using his blockers. Watch the, watch the lateral movement he has. Changes the hand of the ball. Gives a stiff arm. Picks those legs up. So he's just using everything he's got in front of him. This, that's a smart ball runner. Would you believe he's already over 100 yards in this game? <laughs> That's not a bad way to start off the season. 102 yards, and here comes Roland Harper, and Harper inside the 40. Walter Payton, eight 100-yard games in his career, has now completed his ninth 100-yard rushing day. We still have over nine minutes to go in the first half. Whenever you get those 73-yard games, where they help quite a bit. Oh, he is something. At the 40-yard line now, second down, nine. 14 to seven, the Bears are on top. You know, you're talking about momentum and games. This momentum is in Chicago's corner right now. They've, they've had the big plays right along, and they've got the offense moving. Scott, along with Bashnagel, flanked to the bottom of the screen. In motion comes Payton. Now he sets. Here's Roland Harper, and Harper, he's all the way to the 30-yard line, just short of it. Uh, I would say 10, 12 inches short of that first down. Charlie West and Paul Newmoff making the tackle. And there's a case where you got to believe they were keen on Peyton. That's right. It's the same play, same draw play to the other side. I think that middle linebacker was keen. Peyton, Peyton just sat up there, didn't do anything. I think he might have been even confused on the play. Uh, lined up in the wrong slot, came back the other way, and he just stood in the backfield. They're going to measure to see if they got the first down. The Bears are still looking to complete their first pass, but the way they're running the ball, boy, I'll tell you. Let's see if they got the first down. Well, they're about those 10 to 12 inches we thought it was earlier, so it's going to be at the 31-yard line where the Bears are going to have the ball. There's Ben Drive indicating. So third down, inches to go. There's only three things you can do with a pass. Two of them are wrong, as Woody Azy used to say. <laughs> Boy, you guys at Ohio State, I don't know. <laughs> Steve Schubert now comes in replacing James Scott at the wide receiver spot. Bob Abilene has the play call. There's Dennis Lick, number 70, their number one draft pick last year out of Wisconsin. They've had five different offensive lines, combinations of offensive lines that have started. They've got a lot of depth. Abilene's going to sneak it, and he's got it. Bob Abilene with the first down at the 28-yard line. A gutsy call. Here's where the quarterback sometimes would just see something and just take advantage of it. Guard comes straight across. He gets that first down. He only needed about six inches. Also, you also have the chance of fumbling it when you do. We talked about the Giants earlier. Look at that. Which attended at the end a big interception, I understand. George Martin in that game. And Danello with the 22-yard field goal. A give to Peyton. Peyton has quite a collision just short of the 25. Walter Peyton. There is Steve Schubert now on the sideline. He is, uh, he's got an oxygen tank there and a mask. He may have been jolted a little bit. Well, I'll tell you, whenever you run that far, you really, it, it drags you out. We opened against Atlanta one day, and on the first play of the game, it was uh, Unitas had checked off, and we were on the 20-yard line, and he dropped a little pass over to me. That ruined me for the rest of the day. I went 80 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> I had to have resuscitation after that, right? Second down, seven. Alini to Roland Harper. 25. Harper tries to cut it up, and he's to the 23-yard line. Good block that time from Walter Payton, and that's something that impresses me about Payton. He'll block for Harper. Well, this, you know, this is the key to any running game. You have to have two backs in there to block. Here, Payton is going out there, cutting that linebacker down, making it diving, you know, just cutting right at his feet, and he goes over top. Harper goes to the outside, has enough room, you know, there's a middle linebacker flowing along with the flow and picks him up, but he still gets, you know, four or five yards out of the play.
play. Whenever you have that first key block, you know, that'll set up the play for you. That was Charlie Weaver that Peyton cut down, and he's one of the best linebackers in the NFL. Third down and five. Abilene backs got protection. James Scott, and Scott has got it inside the five-yard line. James Scott, a real surprise last year. A refugee of the World Football League. Catches the pass. Here's Abilene setting up. He's got the time. This is what they were worried about. He wasn't going to have the time. Great protection. Sets up. Drills that ball in. Both receivers coming to the inside. Takes the safety out of the way. Is in front. Charlie West and Hunter in on a tackle. And West is shaken up. He had quite a collision with Scott. You know this Scott, he just came out of nowhere last year. He had 26 catches. I don't think they know how fast he is. Now let's hear and see some excerpts of CBS Nighttime Favorites. When Major Burns gets reassigned, Major Winchester gets mash. You actually wear that? Sure, and I'm operating on pilot. Then the season premiere, Lou Grant. I got a tip that something's cooking at the cop house. Whatever it is you're hiding, I mean to get it out in the light. Two new stars, Tuesday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. A first and goal now for the Bears after the pass completion to Scott. Cutting the ball up inside the five-yard line. Bob Abilene to Peyton. He may get the corner turned, and he's in for the touchdown. Walter Peyton just got inside at pylon as James Hunter was the guy who ran over. And the Chicago Bears have taken a 20-7 to lead. There's some excited offensive linemen, boy. Here's Peyton racing to the outside. He's got that great speed. Look at him tiptoe through the tulips right there at the end zone. Hunter comes along the line but just can't get him in time. Bob Thomas now, who's missed a field goal attempt, trying to add his third consecutive point after. Mashnagel the hole. Snapping the ball is Dan Neal. Here's the kick, it's blocked. And Paul Numoff came through. I'll tell you, I don't know how he got there that quickly. Boy, he was untouched that time. He must. Newmoff just jumps right through the hole. Boom. There he comes. Right there. Look, he comes untouched. Somebody will get chewed out for that one. Boy, he almost didn't get a foot in the ball before Newmoff was there. <laughs> That's what you like when somebody's back there for the snap on the other team. <laughs> 20 to 7 now with 609. You know, I keep going back to that momentum part of the game. And you now Detroit's got to do something spectacular right now to get back in the ball game. Detroit. Chicago has everything going for them, Gary, right now. They've got the team is fired up. As you can see on the sideline, the guys are jumping all over each other. They look like a college team down there. And that's what momentum's all about. You know, you get these guys fired up and they think they can go through walls. Doesn't help or hurt rather to have a guy like Walter Payton to turn it around. That 73 yard run. Miami leading the Buffalo Bills. They're holding the juice down right now, evidently. A good old boulage. The big boo went for 20 yards. He uh, was with Baltimore also. Yeah, we got all my well, old buddies. They're all over the place, I'll tell you. A short kick and a return. Running the ball outside is going to be Lynn Bodine, who's an offensive guard by trade. Did a pretty good job. <laughs> Bodine out of South Dakota State and Cleveland leading Cincinnati. That's a surprise. That's a surprise. Cincinnati's got the team. I was, you know, I predicted them to be one of the big contenders this year, even getting down to the Super Bowl. So good field position for the Lions at the 37. Horace King and Dexter Bussy now in the running backfield for the Lions. They trail 20 to 7 after leading in this game, 7 to nothing in the early going. Hill to the bottom of the screen, Jarvis to the top. They split the backs. Here is Dexter Bussy, and Bussy finds running room all the way out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. They started the game out running well, and now we have a flag on the play. Preliminary signal, illegal motion against the Detroit Lions. So that'll negate that fine run. Well, it rains, it pours, and everything's going against them right now. That's why they've got to come up with the big play. That would have been a great opportunity to change this momentum around again. You know, it's interesting. This NFC Central Division has been dominated by the Offense, Minnesota Vikings. Offense, right guard moving before the ball is snapped. 
He sure did. It's a counter That's play. The back, you can see the back getting the big block right there, and he does pick his hole going in the inside. But I started to say to complete my thought, it's been dominated by the Vikings, but here's two young teams that are starting to make their presence felt. They're coming on. First and 15 now. Landry, big pass pressure to Bussey. Bussey to the 30, to the 35, and he's to the 40-yard line. Some fine running that time by Bussey. Landry was really dumped back at the 15-yard line. As coming through was none other than Wally Chambers. You gotta slow, you gotta slow Wally down because if he gets that shot at you, Landry was really lucky to get the ball off. You're supposed to at least hit him once before they come through that line, then let him slide through. Think they're getting the advantage of beating you up on one play, but you gotta slow him down a little bit to give enough time to that quarterback to set up. Well, now it's second and seven after being first and 15. The Lions just outside their own 40. Almost jumping offside the time was Jerry Myers. Landry giving off to Bussy again. Look at him run the ball, and he's got a first down all the way across the 50 to the 47, but again another flag on the play. It's going to be holding this time against Detroit. So two fine runs on this series have been called back. Wayman Bryant eventually coming over there. And it was the good tackle. running, too. This is, the, you know, this is where you can't make these mistakes, especially when you're behind like this, 20 to 7 right now. They had the first down. Now they get themselves a 10-yard penalty. It sets them back in there with a... Offensive holding, number 63. Well, that's John Morris, the 14-year veteran at center out of Holy Cross, who played so many years for Boston, New England. And so now it's going to be second down, 17 yards to go from the 30-yard line. Second down, 17 yards. They have Luther Blue in now to wide receiver, number 89. He's the top of the screen. Bussy and King, again, the running backs. J.D. Hill to the bottom. A couple of men who can really run at wide receiver. Second and 17, a fake draw. Here is Landry. And a great catch by David Hill. And Hill is down to the 40, and they wrestle him out of bounds. A major league move that time by David Hill. That's a great pass, too. He had the time to throw the ball. Landry setting up, the back's coming in, giving them the added protection, then releasing to the outside. Landry sets up, he was right out there. Boy, is he big, too. He's playing both a wide receiver and a tight end. They have the luxury of a Sanders and a Hill on the same team. That's why they're using that two, two tight end offense. When you got two big guys like that that can fly. First down at the 39 of Chicago, and the Lions are battling back from those penalties. Landry off to Bussey, and Bussey runs into a real jam. Moves the ball just short of the 37-yard line. It looked like Chicago was trying to put a blitz in there. The middle linebacker stepped right up in the hole. Ron Reidelch making the tackle. Landry's calling his own plays, and that's just a recent thing for the Detroit Lions. Yes, they were having a lot of problems with uh, being sent in from the sideline all the time because it was taking because it was taking so much time, but every once in a while, they'll still come back and send a play in. If they see something from that press box, they'll call it in and send one of the outside receivers in. To the bottom of the screen, Ray Jarvis has flanked out. Second down, nine, a gain of one on that last play. Here's Landry, play action fake, rolling, and he's in trouble, look out. Reitels is there. Ron Reitels, and there is that treacherous footing here. We've had a lot of rain in the Chicago area. It's dried out considerably. Again, Landry is faking that draw that's been so effective. Rolls out with a semi-roll here. Here's where he slips on that turf. It had a lot of rain, as Gary had said, and it makes that the turf out there, the synthetic turf, slippery. Rydells comes in and makes the big tackle. That's the third time now Landry's been sacked in this game. Third down, 14 yards to go. Been a tough drive for the Lions. They've had to battle uphill all the way. Sanders and Hill are both in there, that being David Hill. In motion comes Horace King. And Landry right up the middle, he fumbled the ball. Landry had running room, but he forgot to take the ball. Oh, You know, a few years ago, he went 78 yards on a sneak. Remember that? That's right. See, this is where a quarterback has that opportunity. When he sees everybody's moving to the outside, the middle linebacker went with the flow, Gary. He just figured he might as well go right up the middle. As you can see, the middle linebacker goes. If he gets by there and not loses the ball, he's got a guard in front of him. 
He's got running room. He could have had the first down. Maybe more. Ray Jarvis covered the ball. Here's the fourth out kick by Hoops. It's blocked. Blocked. As coming through on the play is Art Best. And the ball, let's see where they're going to mark it. Well, he just took too much time on that one. Again, though, the snap was not all that good. And they're going to mark the ball at the Detroit Lion 48 yard line. If there's ever any time when there's big plays that are happening in a ball game, I've never seen so many in one first half of a ball game. Here he comes. That deep man should pick up that man. That's Ed O'Neill, number 55. And he had a clean shot at him. Let's check up now. The Packers are leading 21 to nothing over the Saints of Hank Stram. I think that's a, a big surprise. Got to be. Here's Avellini on a delay to Walter Payton, and here he goes at the 40, the 35, and Payton is out of bounds at the 31. He is just magnificent. And he's still running down the sideline, I'll tell you. This, this play has been so successful, it's just that quick draw again. Here comes Roland up. Roland Harper gets the block right there. Payton with a great balance. Look at the stutter steps he's using in a lateral movement. He just picks those feet up and lays them down. Boy, and he never gives up. Look at here on the sideline. He, people still dragging me, still running. I love it. Boy, he faked Charlie West out on that move, but that stutter step you mentioned. And finally, Williams got him out, but it's a first down. And what a day he's having. That was a 17-yard run. He's got capabilities of making that 200-yard mark today. He has 125 yards, and here comes his running mate, Roland Harper. And Harper is just going to live up to Peyton's ability. He's inside the 20, and that should be another first down. Again, here's this play has been so successful, Gary. Look, at it's just another draw. His defensive linemen are coming across. They're getting the blocks on the offensive. Look at the move there. Fakes Newmoff right out. Breaks to the outside. Good hard running. Hey, there's some blocking going up in that front line. Uh, there's some hitting. That's where that's where the game's played. Let me tell you, whenever I've, after the ball game, that's the first per people I went over to see were those offensive linemen. Said, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> From the 19, first down. There's another delay to Walter Payton to the 15. Payton to the 10. He just ran over somebody. Paul Numa is who he ran over, and that's a pretty big man to run over. Again, the same play. It's just that quick delayed draw. So Walter Payton doing quite a job as we have the two-minute warning. Payton, 10 for 134 yards as he leads 20 to 7. Sears National Automotive Sale. Sears brings back 73 prices again on our best-selling steel-belted radio with a tough roads heritage. As low as $39.88 on sale now. If your car has over 20,000 miles on it, now's the time to drive into Sears for a free shock absorber check. While Sears heavy duty shocks are on sale for just $4.99 each, you save over 35% at Sears. It was really a good movie. It was good, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, honey, look, some poor guy left his lights on. Larry. <laughs> Is he going to be in trouble? Larry. <laughs> Boy, am I glad it isn't me. Larry, hmm? it is you. It is me. Oh. The Die Hard has extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. Starting soon in your neighborhood. Sold only at Sears. Well, Walter Payton has been the story in his first half. Ten carries. Now we have it for officially at 129 yards. Well, he's only averaging close to 13 yards a carry. <laughs> Think he can play? Uh, I think he can play. I think I'd have him on my team, too. Second down now, a long yard to go for a first and goal. The Bears with a 20 to 7 lead. This is Roland Harper. And Harper's got it inside the five. He's got it first and goal to two yard line. Roland Harper getting a block from Walter Payton. They're just kind of trading off right now. They're complimenting each other so much. And Payton's mad because he didn't he, that Harper didn't get in there. He wanted him to get him in. You know, you said something about the success of the Colts, and you see something in the Bears here. They're close. You can see they're pulling for each other. That's what you had in Baltimore, right? We sure did, and that was one of the key things that made us a successful ball club. We didn't have all of the great physical specimens, as I told you, but we had a camaraderie of the ball players that pulled together. You can see that on the field for Chicago right now. That's right. First and goal at the two. Here is Peyton, and Peyton is hit, and he got a yard, and that's all. And he got it on just 
sticking it in there. Jim Laslovic had quite a collision with him, and he's getting up kind of slow on that one. <laughs> that was a good tackle. Good defensive play by Detroit there. Here's that. Here's where they. Detroit's got to stop them right now. They've got to stop them to a field goal if they can. Otherwise, this game could get out of hand. Ashnagel comes out. John Gilliam will come in now for the Bears. John Gilliam, who's caught in his career 47 yard touchdown passes, or 47 touchdown passes. Abilene, Peyton again, and Walter Peyton is in for the touchdown. And there's the spike by Jeff Seavey. That's one of the traditions. The offensive lineman spiked the ball for this guy, number 34, <laughs> Walter Peyton. He just made it on his own right here. This is second effort. Good block by the guard, knocks him outside. He cuts up to the inside. Watch this extra effort. Abilene handing off. Harper's leading to play. Peyton picking his hole, looking for the breakup. Guard knocks him outside. He cuts to the inside. It's just good hard running. Gets in that end zone. Anytime you break that plane, that invisible plane, you're in there. That's his second touchdown of the day. Bob Thomas this time gets it underway. And he's got it. Randy Rich almost blocked that one. And it's now 27 to 7, and the Chicago Bears have started out impressively in this 1977 season. And the stands are now getting, everybody's getting to their feet. A standing ovation here for the Chicago Bears. Reminder now, stay with us at halftime. We'll go back to New York for the NFL today. And Phyllis and Irv and Brent will be bringing you all the highlights from around the league. And this is the most interesting start to the 70s. Seven seasons, some upsets. I'll explain to you what is happening. And I'm sure the rest of the NFL, seeing this score today in other ballparks, must be amazed that it could be 27 7 right now. Well, it's such an important ball game for both ball clubs. And if Chicago can get off with this victory here, you know, and if Minnesota loses up in Dallas, uh, up, uh, to Dallas, you know, Chicago could be out in front by a whole game. And that's something they haven't been. You know, Chicago fans. The standing ovation that they just received here, the Bears, they want a winner, Gary. Isn't it interesting, though, they started out this game booing because the Bears didn't get anything going the first couple of series. How the fortunes can change. Bob Thomas going to have to reset the ball on the tee as it has fallen off. 27 to 7. Walter Payton, 12 carries, 130 yards, and two touchdowns. And Steve Schubert went 70 yards on a punt return. And it's been a big play Chicago Bear team. The Lions scored first on a one yard smash by Dexter Bussey taking the opening kickoff 80 yards. The line drive again. It's tough to handle. Randy Rich is trying to pick it up. He does at the 20 yard line the 25 and to the 29. Bob Thomas with those little knuckle balls tough to feel. You're back there and one of the things that you the wedge men are not supposed to do is touch that thing unless it's actually in their hands and if they do get it ahead of time which they do sh should do is lateral it back to that running back in the back. He's the guy that's the expert in it. So at the 29 yard line the Detroit Lions trailing 27 to 7. They have Luther Blue at the top of the screen. You see the time remaining on the lower right hand corner 31 seconds. It's been quite a first half of play for Chicago. Landry back to throw. Good protection. Far side, Ray Jarvis. He gets out of bounds and stops the clock, and he has the first down at the 49. All kinds of protection that time, Gary. They're using another formation in there that's, that's a little bit different, too. Ray Jarvis last year, 39 catches. He was voted the most valuable player on offense last year, and that only took six seconds. And they had the ball out to the midfield strike. There is part of that offensive core. Steve Schubert, who's number 85 with a 70-yard return. Harper, Payton. And also Art Best on the sideline. Detroit spreading out that Chicago defense, giving enough time to hit in those zone, dead zone spots. Landry looking, and it is complete to the 40-yard line. Nice catch that time. Coming over on a play. Luther Blue. Timeout being called. So they use one of their timeouts. 12 seconds left. Luther Blue coming back on the ball. That was a good. That was a good. That was a good catch. As you can see, Landry setting up here. He's got the time. They're using a prevent defense right now, but in two minute, what we call a two minute drill. Got plenty of time. He sets up, scramble a little bit here, throws that ball in. Luther Blue comes back for it. That's a, it's a great comeback. 
It's a good throw. It was low to the outside, keeping it away from that defender. Luther Blue, their number four pick this year, an All-America from Iowa State. Last year catching over 30 passes for the Iowa State Cyclones. So with timeout, second and one now, just outside the 40-yard line. One thing about Landry, he can score him in a hurry. He sure can. He can move that ball. He's an old veteran back there, and he's got the capabilities of moving the offense. He, he'll be able to get a couple more, maybe two or three more plays off before the clock runs out. Well, he's had a pretty good at first half, Tom. He's 7 of 11 for 180 yards. But it's been the big plays of Chicago. And don't you know, everybody thought this is going to be a tight-fisted defensive battle, and here we are, 27-7 and a half. The old black and blue theory of, of just knock em, sock em type football is not prevalent today by no means. This has just been an exciting football game. Well, I think it shows you the potential of both these football teams. Well, they're young, young teams. they're young, they're aggressive, and they're hungry. Two tight ends, Hill and Sanders, are in the backfield on this play. Blocking for Landry. Releasing is Charlie Sanders. 35, 30, 25, 20. He's got to get out of bounds and stop that clock, and he does with three seconds left. Did you see that? They had both Sanders and Hill in the backfield on that blocking play. And they play. have both the outside receivers on the line of scrimmage. That's the play that they tried to run before. Here's Landry setting up. You can see the screen setting up to the right-hand side. The prevent defense is back so far that he has all the room in the world to run. John Morris threw a fine block, and this is going to be a 35-yard field goal attempt by Steve Nickemeyer. Three seconds left in this first half. The snap, the kick by Nickemeyer, and the kick is good. And the Detroit Lions get three points as this first half comes to a close. That's the end of the first half with the score here at Soldier Field. The Chicago Bears 27, the Detroit Lions 10. So this crowd here enjoying this first half of play as the Chicago Bears, a team who some people feel have the potential and the ability to end the reign of the Minnesota Vikings, who are going for their ninth title in their last 10 years, and the Chicago Bears, with their magnificent Walter Payton in this first half of play, have come out here, and <laughs> this capacity crowd has been sold out for three weeks getting their money's worth. I'll tell you one thing. Whenever you get the momentum going into a locker room like this, 27 to 10, and Chicago, Chicago come out in the second half, watch here. They're going to come out all fired up again. And I think another thing that's helped happen just before halftime here was Landry's control of that ball club in the two-minute offense. Uh, he moved that ball club right down. And, and, the, and the thing that really got him in position for that field goal is that he had the poise and the, and the experience to get that ball club down. We're going to take a look now at the last touchdown, the second touchdown of the game for Walter Payton, scoring from one yard out. Payton just having an unbelievable first half of play. Great effort as he takes it over. 27 to 10, our halftime score at Soldier Field. Board in your future. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. The second half, ready to go as you're looking at Jim Osborne, number 68, defensive tackle for the Bears. His club on top, 27 to 10. It's been the big plays. A 73-yard gallop by Walter Payton setting up the first touchdown. Steve Schubert, 70 yards on a punt return. And then they came back later to score again. Walter Payton scoring from one yard out. The Lions, who had the lead 7 to nothing, taking the initial kickoff, 80 yards, 11 plays, then scored with no time remaining in the first half on a 35-yard field goal by Steve Nickemeyer. So the Lions, I think, had to get some confidence, as you said, Tom, finishing off the first half on that fine two-minute offense by Landry. That's a veteran for you in there. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a real good quarterback. I like his style of play. He has that time he can throw that ball, and he's got some great speed on the outside for those receivers. And with two tight ends like Sanders and Hill, you know, you, you just can't find two better ball players than that. All right, looking statistically, really not as much difference as you might expect. You know, you look at the Detroit has 213 total yards. Chicago only has 194, and 130 of them is, you know, as Peyton's running. That's right. And of course, that big 70-yard punt return. That, that, that doesn't that, show up that, there. That didn't hurt either. All right, here's Nickemeyer kicking off. This is Vince Evans, the rookie from USC, up to the 15, to the 20, and hit hard. The ball goes out of bounds. Quite a collision that time. 
racing over was Andy Bolton, who dropped him. And it's going to be just across the 20. Andy Bolton just came on the roster. He made a flying tackle through the air, just knocked Evans' feet right out from underneath him. Well, Vince Evans, not a bad quarterback himself. He hasn't had any playing time, but he wanted to return the ball, and he's in there now doing it for the Chicago Bears. You know, Chicago's real high on Evans. They sort of have, are going to try to bring him along very slow, develop him as far as the quarterback goes. Bob Avellini is the quarterback. As we start the second half of play, his team on top, 27 to 10. There's a delay action to Walter Payton, who has 130 yards, and he's going to add some more just on sheer determination. Excellent run that time by Walter Payton. He just won't give up. Charlie Weaver, the MVP on defense last year for the Detroit Lions, making the tackle. It doesn't look like uh, Chicago's going to give up on that play either. They must have run that play seven times today. That same delayed draw. Four yard pickup, second and six. You see Seavey, 75, Jackson, 65, Piper, the center, 53. That's Greg Latta, 88. They're big tight end. They send James Scott to the top of the screen, flanked out. Schubert to the bottom. Abilini on second and six. He's going deep. Scott is down there, but he can't get to it. That was just run down the field, I'll get it to you. That's right. If he'd have laid that out to the sideline, Scott had him beaten. Racing back there with him was Hunter, their number one draft pick of a year ago. Hunter has been playing a little bit hurt. Lim Barney, the veteran, 11 years for the Detroit Lions, was shaken up this week, ran into one of his own teammates. He's been moved to a safety spot. I don't know if he's able to play or not. He's got that bruised thigh, and, and they got him taped up, and he, he warmed up, but I don't know how he's feeling as far as uh, uh, he was a doubtful. He's got a 50-50 chance of playing. Now they put in an extra linebacker on an apparent passing situation, third and six. Abilini back at the 15-yard line. He's got Peyton and watch him go. 25, and he's dropped back there. Good coverage that time for the Detroit Lions. Charlie Weaver and Jim Mitchell flying over. The New York Giants and Washington Redskins, and the Skins are coming back. I'll tell you, old George Allen comes up, comes up with that big play. Kilmer, the old dog, the old quarterback dog back there, drops one over to Riggins for a three-yard touchdown pass. 37 years young. Hey, uh, he, he and I came in the league together. I didn't know you were that old. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth down now as to kick the ball. It's going to be Bob Parsons at the 12-yard line. Randy Rich deep for the Lions. Fine kick. Randy Rich will take it at his own 29. Looking for some running room. He's got some at the 40 to the 42-yard line. Dan Neal, who snapped the ball, down there to make the tackle for the Chicago Bears. So at the 42-yard line, the Detroit Lions down by 17 points. Have the football, 13.20 to go, third quarter. Successful new car in history comes to America. Introducing Fiesta, now imported from Germany by Ford. Fiesta, 0 to 50 in an average of 8.8 .8 seconds. Road gripping Michelin radial tires. The traction of front wheel drive and excellent gasoline economy. Fiesta, Europe's most successful new car in history. Test drive one at your authorized Ford dealer now. The Hilton Rainbow Service Welcome. Look for it on your next business trip. In the nation's capital, it's minutes from Pennsylvania Avenue at the Washington Hilton. In Los Angeles, you'll find rainbow service near the Civic Center at the Los Angeles Hilton. While in San Francisco, it's just a cable car ride from almost anywhere. Hilton rainbow service. You'll find it at the heart of every Hilton, in the heart of most every city. Let the Hilton rainbow brighten your day. Well, checking the rest of the activity. New England coming from behind in their game. 21-17 over Kansas City. Horace King, the running back. The Lions now with the ball. They score here. They're right back in this one. As Horace King trying to get wide. He's going to. He's got a first down and then some. All the way to the 46-yard line of Chicago. Don Reed, Craig Clemens flying over there. King started the game very effectively, carrying the ball eight yards, or eight times, rather, on one drive. He's had a pretty good afternoon. He's been overshadowed by Peyton, but he has 14 carries, 85 yards. That's a good afternoon in any man's leg. But here's, a, here's the opportunity that, that Detroit has right now. They got that first down, the first one. They've, they're changed around here. If they can keep this drive going, score on this, they're right back in the ball game. All right, first down at the 46 of Chicago. Just underway, third quarter play. 
Jarvis to the bottom of the screen. Hill to top. Here's the pass and for J.D. Hill at the 40-yard line. Pretty good coverage at time. Wayman Bryant getting back there. They were kidding Bryant. He has good drops, but he's got bad hands. Bad hands. They call them boards. <laughs> that's, our, that's the old nickname we used to. We used to have guys that come into camp who had the greatest speed in the world, Gary. They could fly down that field, or a linebacker could move back, and you throw that ball right in their hands, and you go boom. <laughs> and I understand Pardee's been working with him all year, throwing the ball to him. Second down, 10 yards to go. In motion, Horse King. Landry. Good protection. And the catch is made at the 30-yard line by J.D. Hill. So they come back to the little guy. Hill's not very big, about 185 pounds, but they have another first down. Watch Livers on this. As J.D. comes right down to him, sets him up, breaks back to the inside. The outside receiver going around the other way. Livers gives him the first push. He's allowed to hit him one time. It's good protection. It's a good throw, and it's a good catch. It, you know, it's just a the perfect play, except Livers didn't knock the thing down. Landry, very, very aggressive, the way he's moving this football team. Luther Blue has now checked in. He's bottom of the screen. Here's Landry giving off to Horace King. King's in trouble, and down he goes. Kind of self-tackleization that time at the 30-yard line. Again, the rain here in the Soldier Field area, I'm sure, playing a part on that play. Well, you can see the field starting to dry out right now down there. It's Wally Chambers. Looks like he's hurting a little bit. I guess not. Just concentration. Concentration and loosen them up. Loosen those hamstrings up. That's one of the things that the uh, the NFL and, and all the pro teams are doing more and more are instead of just doing the calisthenics part of it, they're doing what they call stretch exercises. Keep those muscles stretched out so you don't pull anything. Second and ten from the 30 of Chicago. And big Charlie Sanders. No, David Hill. And David Hill goes out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Well, he's tough to bring down. Gary Fensick, who is replacing the injured Doug Plank, made the stop. Fensick's a fine football player in his own right out of Yale. Tough little kid. So now we come to a third and six. This is the big play right now. Detroit can change that momentum, get it going for themselves right now. If they come up with a play here, get themselves in a position where they can score. I'll tell you, you know, we got a, we got a crowd here that's feeling that importance, too. Blue is blanked out to the bottom of the screen. Third and six. Landry scrambling up, and he may run for that first down. The 20, he's got it. All the way inside the 15-yard line. That's the Greg Landry for so many years. He was always looking to run first, but now he looked to pass that time. He sure can. And here's a smart quarterback. He sets up. He's got the time. He looks at his receiver, he's covered, he steps up in the pocket, sees there's no place to run. There's big number 68 chasing right after, but he gets that first down, ducks his head in. Luther Blue, I guess, was the man he wanted to go to, and he was covered. He had that double zone to the outside, and he had to cut, come back in, he was coverage. First down, a big third down scramble by Greg Landry. Nets the first down, on first down, he's throwing. And Horace King, the intended receiver, and a flag back at the 20 yard line. Oh, that's going to hurt the Detroit Lions. They've had to battle back from penalties time and time again. The whole game. I like. Ben Dreith now spotting the ball. The time again, he had the good protection, and that's, I'm sure, heartening to Tommy Hudspeth in that offensive line. Offensive holding, number 63. 63 is going to be John Morris, the offensive center. It's a couple these, of times they've caught him in this game. <laughs> these are the mistakes that you just can't have, Gary. Whenever you're, whenever you got a drive going and the momentum that keeps building up, and you're driving down that field, and you know, they score right here, they're back in the ball game. They can't have fundamental mistakes like that. So after the 10-yard penalty, it's second and 20 for the Lions. Landry back again. Good protection. Throwing down here to Ray Jarvis, but he was covered very well by Alan Ellis. Also, Doug Buffon dropping back. Well, there's an active linebacker. He's already back to the, the end zone line. He's coming back from the Keeley's tendon injury. They say that when he walks, he limps, but when he runs, you don't notice it. That's right. Play coming in now. Luther Blue, 89. Comes in with a play for Greg Landry. Looks like they're calling more of him. We were told at the start of the game, Tom, that Landry's going to call him. There's Jack Pardee. 
Wally Chambers now has checked in. Rydell has checked out. They use Chambers on apparent passing situations. Third and 20. They've got to. They're going to come out with it. A double tight end offense again. One back in the backfield. That one back is Horace King. Third and 20, a draw to King and nothing. Great reaction that time by Wayman Bryant. Chicago had the blitz on that time. It was a good second guess by Chicago here. Here they are. Look at the linebackers right up on the line of scrimmage. Wayman Bryant coming from the outside all the way to the inside makes an arm tackle. He's one of those big strong guys. You can't get it once he gets a hole. He ain't going to let you go. Here's where they got to have that big play again, Gary. Darn. Well, we have a final on this first day of our season, and the Dolphins under one of your former coaches, Don Shula. Mr. Shula. 13 0. Third down now, 22, and we have a timeout call by the Detroit Lions. Lions want to talk it over. Important third and 22. They're down 27 to 10, and Greg Landry knows how important it is that they get some points on this drive. Now well, the outside receivers were lining, going, bouncing back and forth. They didn't know what quite to do. J.D. Hill was going to go to one side and decided to go to the other, and figured Landry figured that this is a key down for him. This drive is a key, key drive. That's Tommy Hudspeth standing there with a the clipboard and the microphone. Tommy coming over last year, replacing Rick Forzano when they were one and three, and he posted a 5-5 record. Now the Redskins lead the Giants 17-10, a big Eastern Division battle in the NFC. George Allen is coming back with the old dogs. Those are all the guys I used to play with, Gary. <laughs> I tell you, they have some kind of a magic potion. They just keep coming back each year, despite that age. Now they picked up another one of our ball players who used to play with us when I was in Seattle was Mike Curtis, the middle linebacker. And that was one of the, the key positions where George needed a lot of help at for Washington was middle linebacker. I think Curtis has got a number of years left in him. He's coming over from the Seattle Seahawks. So the Detroit Lions now to set the stage again have a third down, almost 23 yards to go. They trail 27 to 10. A very impressive drive by Greg Landry. Landry, the comeback player of the year, the NFC last year. All right, again, we'll remind everybody next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the Trenton 150 Indy Type Cars in the USAC event. It's going to be televised live from the Trenton International Speedway. Mario Andretti, Tom Sneva, Gordon Juncock, Al Unser, Janet Guthrie. Should be a good one. It sure should. There we go. Third down, a long 22 yards to go. Both tight ends, Sanders and Hill, are in the lineup now on this big third down. In motion, Horace King. Landry setting up the screen. David Hill to the 30, 25. He just ran over somebody at the 20, but they're way short of the first down. Wayman Bryant collided with him. Wayman Bryant in this drive has been all over the place. I think with that type of a long yardage situation that they were just trying to get in better field goal position, knock that three points down, and all they had to do is come back with the two touchdowns. A lot of time left. A lot of time in this ball game is right, Gary. Nine minutes and 20 seconds to be exact. Wally Chambers comes out. Reitel's coming in to replace him. And this is going to be a 38-yard field goal attempt by Nickemeyer, who already has booted a 35-yarder. And that kick looks pretty good. And is. Right through those uprights. Steve Nickemeyer has now made it a 27-13 game. Nine minutes and 16 seconds left to go in this third quarter. 27-13, the Bears have had their lead cut by three on a 38-yard field goal by Nickemeyer, who is kicking off here. Vince Evans is deep for the Bears at the goal line. 10, 15, 20. Meyer Evans, rather, out across the 25, and he went out of bounds, according to the official, to the 31-yard line. Good return. Randy Rich rammed him out. This reminder, our viewers in the Detroit area will be seeing the second game of our doubleheader between Dallas and Minnesota. But this reminder to our Chicago viewers, because we are able to bring you the Chicago Bear home game, the second game of today's doubleheader on CBS will not be seen in Chicago due to the provisions of the CBS NFL contract. Washington and the Giants, can you believe that? Ah, this is going to be another battle over there. 17 all. We may have our first sudden death again over. Yeah. Here's Walter Payton. And Walter Payton out to the 35-yard line. 
Now, Green Bay is a big surprise today. Now, New Orleans is finally on the board. Big Chuck Muncy picked up one. 24 to 7. The Packers under Bart Starr. What an auspicious start for them. I know Jim Fink said, hey, the Central Division, the NFC, is going to be something. <laughs> They're doing all right today, I think. He's not a nicer guy in the world than Bart Starr either. I, you know, I wish him all the luck in the world because this guy's rebuilding very similar to both of these ball clubs right here. This entire division of the Minnesota has been on the rebuilding track. Now you put Tampa Bay in there. Here comes Roland Harper. Harper runs into Jim Laslovic and he just spun him around. One thing about the Lions, Tom, Eddie, they just swarm you. They just bounce off of people. They keep coming after you. You know, we, when I was a player and a running back, these are the two ball clubs that I really didn't like to play against because you knew you were not going to get hit once, but you're going to get hit five times every time you carried that ball. Is that where that black and blue thing <laughs> came from, the I'll division? You, I, I was black and blue many Monday morning, I'll tell you. At the 36-yard line now, third and five for Chicago. Right now, the Lions got the field position. They've got three points in the second half. Trying to whittle away at the Chicago Bear lead. Detroit's got to come up with a big defensive play right now. Stop that first down here. And they almost got it. Weaver almost sacked him. And then Jim Mitchell got a hand on the ball and batted it down. Weaver set it up. And then Mitchell reached up. Mitchell at six foot three, batted it down. And it's a fourth down. And there's that play you were talking about. That's right. That's a big defensive play that they needed. Now, here's where Detroit can really turn it around. They get a good return here with no mistakes. Not like that fumble on the last one on Luther Bluehead. By the way, Abilene now is two of six for 18 yards. It's been the rushing game of Chicago. There's Revi Sore, the former Illini standout, offensive guy. Bob Parsons to kick. He hits a nice nose-high spiraling kick, a fair catch by Randy Rich, and he's got it at the 20-yard line. So the Detroit Lions have scored the last six points of this game, scoring three before half and three here in the third quarter, now trailing 27-13. I drive a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they're built tough. Right, daddy? Right. And I bought a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they were built tough. Right, daddy? Yep. And I drive a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they were built tough. Right, daddy? That's right, yeah. My daddy came to take it in a covered wagon. I had to learn about Fords on my own. I'm a smart old bird, ain't I? <laughs> Of all Ford trucks registered over the last 12 years, 93 out of 100 are still on the job. If you've ever wondered how something so big got off the ground, part of the answer is light, strong aluminum. Aluminum's high strength and light weight made modern aviation possible. Aluminum is important to most forms of transportation because taking the weight off planes and trucks, and now cars, saves fuel. Aluminum and transportation can be an energy saver today. We can't wait. We can't wait. The Honey Bears here at Soldier Field in Chicago. Sellout crowd, 57,359. The Lions with the ball, trailing 27-13. There's Landry's statistics, not bad. Extra Bussy, the running back behind Landry. This is Bussy with the ball. Look out, he's coming the other way. The race is on, and he runs into black-shirted Chicago Bears everywhere. Eventually got it out to about the original line of scrimmage. Doug yep. Buffon was over there, just a wall of bears. He got caught in the inside there, but there was a great box that was thrown on that when he cut back inside. There he is. It's all jammed up. No place to go. He breaks back to the outside. Now watch number 49 come back in here with the block. Boom. Hits him on the side. It was a legal block. The official was right there. They're complaining about a, a clip, but it was a clean block. That was Ray Jarvis who was Ray coming back. <laughs> that little guy. He, I wouldn't want to been on the receiving end of that. you got to have eyes in the back of your head. Second down, nine, a gain of one. A lot of running for Dexter Bussett. In motion, Horace King. They have a three-back backfield. That's both tight ends back there. Well, that's interesting. Thrown short. Headed receiver at the 40-yard line. Again, they had both tight ends, Sanderson Hill, back blocking. Jim Osborne put good pressure that time on Greg Landry. Well, I'll tell you, Muncie scored two touchdowns now. A two-yarder and a three-yarder. He's coming around real good. He's a big, strong back, too. They expect a lot out of him down there. Well, with Manning back and Muncie and Galbraith, they've got some skilled people at New Orleans. Green Bay's going to have to hold on with both feet to get stay ahead of them. Third down, nine now. 
Lions are going to split two receivers at the top, one to the bottom. And again, they have those two tight ends in the backfield. Here's Landry back. It's complete. All the way out to the 38-yard line to Ray Jarvis. And Landry is just really showing great poise back there. He is. He is. He's that. He's getting that time to be able to throw the ball. Here he is setting up again. He has the time to set up. That offensive line's giving him the protection that he needs. He's looking at his receivers. Steps right up there. I mean, you can't ask for any better protection than that. Steps right through, follows through. There's Jarvis right on receiving end. Playing that zone defense. When you find that dead spot, you just lay it in there and let that quarterback throw it to you. Boy, he is laying it in there, too. That had some zip on it. He's now 12 of 20 for the game, 177 yards. First down, Landry back over the middle. Charlie Sanders, did he catch that? I think he caught that. That's an Unbel unbelievable. unbelievable. I don't that's, believe that. That's a one hand. Here's Landry setting up. He sees it. Tight end releasing to the inside. This, look at this. This is great. Great coverage. Oh. Grabs that ball, pulls it in, tucks it in. I tell you, you wonder what you have to do to keep him from <laughs> catching the ball, huh? The Giants were beaten by the Redskins. The final 2017, an upset Sunday. Here now is Landry cranking up deep. Tenor receiver on the far side, J.D. Hill. Just got rid of that one. He was covered well on the play. Would you like to do that every once in a while, keep that defense back a little bit so you can come under him on the shorter ones? By the way, Charlie Sanders coming into this game needed three to tie the all-time reception record by Gail Cogdell. He's now caught two. One more, he'll tie Tied. it, four to break. Four to break it. There it is, the Giants over the Redskins. This is a great, that, this is a big upset. Boy, what a win that is for John McVay. Horace King, the running back, Hill the top of the screen, Ray Jarvis to the bottom. Third down, three yards to go. Landry is still in the air with football. Throwing and another remarkable catch. That's David Hill, the other tight end. There's a flag on the play. Oh, back to the 35 there is, but both tight ends, Hill and Sanders, are trying to outdo each other, but they're going to bring that one back, holding against Detroit. Again, what a catch that was. I mean, to tell you, these guys are... Landry is throwing that ball so well. He's laying it right out there. That's the only place you could have thrown that ball. That's the fourth penalty now. Whenever, whenever Offensive he, holding, number 71. Craig Hertwig, the third-year man. They call him Skyscraper. He's six foot eight, out of Georgia, the guilty party. So it's going to be third down, 13. But this is the kind of game where the Bears, I tell you, that defense really working. They've got him working. Huh? Landry's got such a... A hot hand right now. He's capable of pulling this out getting the first down. Both tight ends now are back in the backfield. Very unusual formation. Back to throw Landry. Steps up. He scrambles to the 30. He kind of stumbled that time as he started out. I think he tripped on somebody's foot just as he was stepping up. Well, Chicago came up with the defense that they had to do. They had to stop that momentum of Detroit, and they have right now. Now, if they can turn this thing around and get a score. You can watch in this two tight end backfield. Watch Sanders on number 88 come back in here. They've got, Chicago's got the blitz on, and he just he just lays out Bryant. I mean, I wouldn't want that big tight end coming down, cracking back on me. Pitch hoops will kick now for Detroit. A low kick at the 40-yard line, and it's going to go out of bounds there. Chicago will have the ball at the 40-yard line. They have held on with great tenacity to stop this wide-open Detroit Lion offense. 5-11 to go, third quarter. The Bears 27, the Lions 13. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on doing that till I get it right. Yeah, I work hard and I play hard and I use new STP gas treatment. You just pump it in your tank and it goes to work cleaning your carburetor. I take good care of my wheels on account of I'm cheap. I bet you are too. Try it. 
Here's a few tips on how to get out of an airport fast. One, join the number one club and reserve a car with Hertz. Two, have your license and credit card ready because Hertz will be ready for you. Just sign and go. Three, need directions? Ask Hertz. They know the shortest route. Nobody can get you out of an airport faster. Nobody can get you out of an airport faster. Go, Julie! Go! Rent a Ford from Hertz. A superstar in Renacom. Right. That's Forrest Gregg and the Cleveland Browns, 13 to three. Boy, that's a that's that is a big upset. Well, Cincinnati, a lot of people feel they are going to win their division, and another final. Believe that one, will you? Uh, we're living up to the reputation that anything can happen on any Sunday. Here's Walter Payton, who has 138 yards already. Moves the ball out to the 45-yard line, and he just like that picked up about five yards, as quick as you can describe it. James Hunter making the tackle. What do we have? We've had the Giants with an upset. We've had an upset now just moments ago. I, it's incredible what's happening. And it, it just has to be an exciting weekend to start off because everybody's going to say, well, what's going to happen next week? And Second down, they say it's four from the 45-yard line. 4.40 to go, third quarter. The Bears leading 27 to 13. Avellini, Roland Harper. And Roland Harper nudges it out across the 47. Doug English made the stop. You know, the Detroit Lions have had so many knee injuries. They had 10 one year, I think six last year. And English seven, is one seven, of those. Seven last year. They've already had two this year. Two promising football players, two of their big draft choice. One linebacker and a, and a, I think a running back, wasn't it? Ron Crosby is Ron that Crosby. linebacker out of Penn State. And talking to, uh, uh, you know, to Detroit, he said that they were, he was really one of the real promising guys that probably could have had a starting position on the team. Well, English was one of those. He went out of the sixth game. Orvis, who plays alongside him, went out the second game last year with knee injuries. Third down, a long yard. Roland Harper. And Harper's got it. A first down. Boy, he just battles it. I'll tell you one thing. That's hard running. He was, when he hit the ground, his feet were still moving. You know, 17th round draft pick, Roland Harper. One other guy, Bart Starr, was a 17th round draft pick. This may be the most next famous guy that was drafted in that round. And there's another one. Well, that's expected, but I tell you, Tampa Bay hung in there tough. Yeah, you know, Tampa Bay a couple weeks ago beat the Baltimore Colts. 13 to 3 for Mills team. The Eagles getting off on a winning note. Tampa Bay, of course, this year in this black and blue division, the NFC, the Central Division. First down. Abilene to Peyton and nothing. And the reason, Ken Sanders. Sanders closed in. He's been an anchor on that left side of the defensive line. Sixth year man out of Howard Payne. He started all the games the last four years. Here he is, number 82. 245 pounder. Now, the thing about the Lions up front, they're not very big, really. I mean, big by most well, standards. You know, these guys nowadays, you know, you're small if you're 6'4 and 250. That's right. <laughs> I tell you, the Bears have a fullback that's as big as most linemen and Robin Earl. <laughs> You're not kidding. 6'5", 250, 242 to 250. They right said up. he checked in at 259 pounds. He's down now. <laughs> Second and 12, Abilene. Ryan Bashnagel, but coverage very well that time by Hunter. That Hunter is going to be quite a player. Last year, he picked off seven Hunter. interceptions. That's going to bring it back to the 50-yard line. Ashnagel covered very well. The thing that Bashnagel is really, you know, he, he's the kind of kid who is one of the all, you know, he's just everything. He's just a competitor. He's a real hustler on that field. You know, a lot of people won't recognize Bashnagel. He was playing with 47. They changed his number to 84 because of playing that wide receiver spot. Uh, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a uh, new rule in the league. If you're a receiver, you've got to have that out there. Third down 12. Abilene back again. Good protection. This is Schubert. Schubert to the 40-yard line. He's still three yards short of the first down. Good coverage that time by Charlie West. You know, every year they look for somebody to beat Charlie West out, and he's always back at that strong safety spot. He's, he's been around quite a while. He was up there in Minnesota for a while, did a good job up there. So it's going to bring up fourth down, and the Lions playing pretty tough defense. Bob Abilene walks off. Fourth down, three. Bob Parsons back to kick. Parsons replaced Bobby Joe Green way back in 1974. He's held on to that job. 
Big rush. He just got it away. Rick Kane was coming through. Look at Schubert. He's down there waiting on the ball. And it's down by the Bears inside the 10 yard line. Dan Neal is down there. They were down there with beautiful coverage on that. It punt. was a good punt. It had a lot of hang time up there. He kicked it straight up in the air, and that's all they wanted to do with it. Well, we've had an upset after upset today. What's going to happen next week? Here's Atlanta. Who Los Angeles are just giving them fits right now, and they're going to play Washington, who's upset. They're going to be two angry teams. <laughs> and New Orleans, Detroit, Detroit. I wonder what they think about that New Orleans game. The way Green Bay is playing them, and what a game Chicago I St. Think, Louis. I think that's the game of the week next week, Chicago St. Louis right now. Well, oh, this isn't bad, huh? The Giants of <laughs> Dallas, Philadelphia, LA. What a season right here on CBS. Here's Landry, complete to Ray Jarvis. Jarvis out of bounds the 15, and he just picks up where he left off. He is making, I'm sure, Jack Pardee's team very, very nervous. Uh, I would I would be nervous at this time. Landry still Landry still has the opportunity to keep his poise. There's a lot of time left in this ball game, Gary, that, that he can move this ball club up and down that field and get the points that's needed. He's only two touchdowns behind right now. They gotta keep that poise. And this All right. is the, anybody can do it, this guy can. New England coming from behind to win. 21-17, but it was not easy. A minute 29 to go, third quarter. Landry gives off to Dexter Bussey, and Bussey rips it out across the 25 to the 30. The 35, first down to the 39-yard line. Fantastic running. He has run well all day. A couple of them have been called back because of penalties. Penalties. Those penalties kill you. But this is good running. Landry hands it up. Bussey makes a cut to the inside right here. Puts a good move on Fensick. Jumps right over top of him. Looked like a high hurdler in the Olympics right there. And gets the big yard. Ellis comes up with a tackle. Back to the live action. First down. 10 from the 39 of Detroit. Landry up the middle goes Horace King and King. Big hole. Goes for seven, eight yards. Gary Fensick making the tackle. And that forward wall has opened up some holes in those last two carries. So the Detroit Lions, an uphill struggle after they led 7 to nothing in the early going. Down at halftime, 27 to 10, now 27 to 13. King is close to 100 yards now, Tom. 17 for 90. He's having a great game. He's picking his holes right. He's cutting back against the green. The flow of the, the Chicago Bears is giving him a, a chance to pick that hole. Second down, two yards to go. Bussy in motion. Landry on the delay to Horace King, and look out. He was converged upon from all sides that time. <laughs> That's when you have that helpless feeling. Mom, where should I go now? They blot the sun <laughs> out, right? Third down now. Still a yard to go. So that's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Chicago Bears 27, the Detroit Lions 13. We now pause for a word from your local station. When a mysterious sneak thief strikes, the Fitzpatricks rally to the challenge. Don't miss this new drama series, Tuesday night on CBS. Gary Bender along with Tom Maddy. We start the fourth quarter. A third and one for the Lions. They need it. They trail 27-13. He's going to throw on it. And he's got wide open Dexter Bussey to the 30-yard line, to the 25, and he's still on his feet to the 20, inside the 15, and that's an old Bart Star third and that one. That is a great call, an absolute fantastic call. There's an old pro. He went over the sideline. He says, Let's, we might as well do it big. That's a super, super a great play. fake right in the line of scrimmage, holds those defensive players. He just lays it out there, linebacker coverage. Should have been on that back coming out of the backfield. Watch this. Watch this, though. This is great balance. You know, there, here's two great backs having great days. You look at Peyton, you look at Bussy. What a start to the season, huh? First down, just inside the 15-yard line. The Lions score here. It's something now. 27-13. They battle back in this game. Landry giving off to Bussy again, and Bussy to just short of the 10-yard line. Bussy. He's King. Peyton, Harper, they've all done it oh, today. I'll tell you. Second down now, six yards to go. Pick up a four. Landry's taking his time, moving that ball club. Well, when you've played 10 years in this league, I guess <laughs> you get a little boys, huh? Or you're not alive very long. <laughs> you're right. I guess you learn how to keep that, try to, try to change that momentum around. Second down. Let's make it almost seven yards to go. 
In motion goes Horace King. Bussy's out of the lineup right now. Here's Landry running to the 10, and he is to the two-yard line. That'll be a first and goal. And I tell you, he went down to protect himself, running very intelligently. He's, he's running smart. Gives that, that, that semi-roll out again here to hold that defense. Landry carries for two. Rolls out there, sees his receivers are covered, sees a hole open to the inside, breaks a tackle there. Here's where he protects himself. Here's where he's a smart quarterback. Covers himself up with both hands on that ball so he doesn't fumble, goes down to the two-yard line, and it's second to go. First yes. to go. He has 33 yards rushing in this game. <laughs> Four for 33. I remember many days I was happy with 33. First and goal now. Just about one yard left. Landry again rolling. Pressure put on, and he's going to lose yardage. And one of the oh. officials dumped over there. <laughs> Doug Buffon and Don Reeves were over there. Landry that time just sidestepped somebody, stayed on his feet. So they lose some yardage. Back outside to the five. I wonder if Reeves will get credited for a tackle on that official. <laughs> Let's look at it again. Watch Reeves, watch Reeves wipe out the official. Official trying to get out of the way. That's what you call the old roll block. <laughs> that official being Jack Johnson taken out. I tell you, those guys are vulnerable out there. <laughs> well, you, they don't have any equipment on there running around there. Sometimes they, I've seen some guys really get wiped out, you know, coming across the field. Second down now and goal at the five-yard line. Off that goes to Dexter Bussey. Bussey inside the five. Touchdown. touchdown. Dexter Bussey. High stepping his way, and he got quite a block from number 62, Lynn Bodine, their number one draft pick in 1975, and Bussey greeted by his teammates. Here you get an opportunity to watch Len Bodine as the guard pulls out around the corner, gets the key block, opens it up, knocks him right back to the outside. Back cuts right off, get a little spike. Again, watch 62 lead the play right through, gets the key block there, breaks him into the end zone. It's a whole new ball game now, yes, Gary. Sir, they hit this one. They're seven points down. Nickemeyer puts it on the way. He got it. And now, all of a sudden, it's a seven-point game. The Chicago Bears, who led by 17 at halftime, now have that lead cut to seven, 27 to 20. Sears is as big as Texas, and it has everything you need. We're at a Sears store to find out why Sears is where America shops. Well, I work for an airline and travel all over the country. So I find that I like to shop at Sears because I can always use my credit card there. The Sears catalog is a fast, easy, convenient way of shopping. I even buy my saris sometimes in Sears at the fabric department. Sears, where America shops. The Ford in Your Future is coming October 7th. The new Ford Fairmont. A new wagon designed for today and the years ahead. The Fairmont wagon has very good mileage ratings, but while it is trim and lean outside, Fairmont has almost 90% of the passenger space of GM's biggest wagons and can swallow up all this cargo. Is Fairmont the Ford in your future? Test drive Fairmont October 7th. Find out for yourself. Fairmont, the newest better idea from the wagon master. Betty White sees red when a blind date for her ex-husband leads to a blossoming romance. Join the laughter tomorrow at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. It's now 27 to 20. The Lions have cut the lead to 7. Nickemeyer kicking off. Vince Evans waits homily at the goal line. Here he comes to the 10, 15, out to the 20, and moves it to the 24-yard line. This is some game to start the 1977 season. A wide open, exciting game. Looking at the statistics, nine plays, 89 yards. And Greg Landry with a great running of Bussey and King has just kept this game wide open. He has, well, that third and one was just something. Super call. That's what they used to call the old arrow takeoff. You go, you know, you fake that line and, and the halfback will just go right down the sideline, turn around the corner. Now either you have it or you don't have it. Look at that one. Minnesota leads the Cowboys 7 to nothing from the 24. First down for Chicago. Abilene giving off to Roland Harper. And Harper out to the 29. So after scoring 27 points in the first half, the Bears have not scored in the second half well, of play. They've, Gary, they've got to get something going right now. And you know, in talking with Jim Finks, he, he said we've not been a 
four-quarter ball club, and this third quarter is an indication of what's happened. That, you know, the momentum has changed. Detroit's got it going in their favor right now. And what they've got to do right now is Chicago's got to get a couple of first downs, keep this thing rolling. They just can't panic. There's Peyton. They haven't been running him that much in the second half. Second and five. Here's Peyton. And Walter Peyton skips yep. out to the 34, and that'll be close to the first down. He almost broke it, Gary. Walt Williams, the rookie out of New Mexico State, their top pick this year in the second round, dropped him there. Peyton does something that, that amazes me. He seems to have top speed and then he accelerates just a little more. It, it, it reminds me a lot of Gale Sears. I think he's probably faster than Gale is, or Gale was, but he has that same lateral movement. Gale Sears could move laterally in midair. Yeah. And, and you know, he was just so deceptive on it. And Peyton has that same thing. He seems like he kicks it in his second gear whenever he gets that opportunity. That is the first down. Green Bay, who led 24 to nothing, now has a four-point lead over the Saints. Boy, I'll tell you one, old New Orleans is coming back strong right now. 59-yard pass. Manning must have that. He must be in pretty good shape. Boy, oh, I'm glad to see that. That's been a long battle back for him. It has been. He's, uh, you know, he's a real competitor, Gary. Good boy. From the 34-yard line now, it's a first down for the Bears. Avalini to Harper, and Harper's hit by Herb Orvis the minute he made his move. He's hit by him. <laughs> He's hit by a whole and bunch company. of them. <laughs> and company is right. A lot of those, those white shirts around there. They may have lost a little bit on that play. They sure didn't gain anything. It would be second down. And now Brian Bashnagel has checked back in to the Chicago Bear lineup. They brought Gilliam out. John Gilliam was on that last play. Second down, still 10 yards to go. The time, 10.42 remaining. The score, the Bears leading by a touchdown down on a point after 27 20. Avellini may have to go to the passing game a little bit here because he's been so effective with the running game. He's got to throw that ball up there get this drive going. Bob Avellini has Bashnagel flanked to the bottom of the screen. Avellini back to throw throwing far side. It's caught. Nice catch on the far side by James Scott and Scott has wrestled down but it'll be a Chicago first down. Big play. Well, Avellini, who was not passing well in the first half, seems now to be back on track. Now he's got that time. He's having the time to set up there. And it was a good move on the outside. You know, Avellini's a mere shadow of his former self. What is he, 15 <laughs> pounds lighter? He's down to about two, 200 pounds right now. You know, last year he played at about 215. And I'll tell you, he's got that better... He, you, you just feel better all around. You lose about 15 pounds, and that was one of the things that Jack Fardy asked him to do in the offseason, to get himself back in a little bit better condition. He's four of nine now for 42 yards. Another first down. Avellini on a delay to Roland Harper. Harper all the way to the 40, and that'll be another first down. Same play again. Detroit is not stopping that lag draw. It's funny how these teams sometimes have forgotten what was working for them. Now they go back to it. You know, that's why you have a press box up here. You know, these guys up here remember, they send it down, they'll send a play in like that. It's been, that, that's been probably the most successful play today. That's the one that Peyton, you know, broke the long one on. Another first down, that's three of them now on this drive at the 40-yard line of Detroit. Time, 9.43. Exactly what the Bears want. Eat up the clock and keep the ball. Avellini again, Walter Peyton, and Peyton skips around. Look at that effort. Look at that. Wow. That kid is just tough. Look, look, look at this. Look at this kid running. I mean, he picks his feet up, lays a twist, keeps diving, gets that extra yardage. Walter Payton is 5'10 and a half. He weighs in at 205 pounds. He says he really thinks about the moves. He practices all week long, kind of visions what he's going to face. His vision's very good. Well, they got a torn of cartilage doing some of those moves. Second down and four. Here's Harper, and he's smothered, but he struggles forward to the 31-yard line. Took somebody on a ride. That's somebody being Laszlovic. That's a lot of meat to carry, too. So now it's going to come to a third down and a yard to go. Third down conversion. Chicago, three of nine. 33%, which you'd like to have if you're looking at statistics. At the end of the season, you'd like to have a 500. That's Bo Rather, number 80, coming out. They continue to send their plays through the wide receiver spot. 
you know, every time we come back on the air here, it's a big play. Here's another big play. It's been that kind of game. Nice angle flank to the bottom of the screen. Peyton, boy, what a dog pile they had at the 30-yard line. I don't think he got it. Boy, that was a stiff upper front put up that time by the Detroit Lions. And I think you're right. He did not. Now, that's a, I'll say it again, a big play. Big play for Detroit. Well, let's see. Will they go for it? I think they've got to. If they want to get this game turned around, they've got to go for it. And if Detroit stops in Moate, they've got to go for them. That was Larry Hand, the oldest man on the ball club, along with Herb Orvis, who stacked that play up. So they're going to go for it on fourth down. You got a tough old dog in there in Larry, I'll tell you. He's been around the league. Had an injury last year, but he's still one of Mr. Consistency over there. Here we go. Fourth down a yard. Peyton again, and he just he got it over. He looked like he was shot out of a cannon. <laughs> he looked like that guy in the Olympics at that high jump. Watch him get his feet right up in the air. He plants it right at the line where he wants to get up over the top, and he goes over. I mean, he's got to be five feet in the air. You know what he is rushing now? 157 yards. <laughs> That's a pretty good day's work. Boy, he took a shot from Laszlovic, number 52. But he got it. A big first down. The time now 725. The ball at the 29-yard line of Detroit. And don't take anything away from Detroit. They made a heck of a stand. Avellini with Harper and Peyton behind him. This is Roland Harper. Harper just couldn't go anywhere with that one. Charlie Weaver read it well. He was a former member of that wild bunch who played at USC. He loves to hit you. They must have had six guys right there on him. Let's check a score now up west Harper. in Baltimore. 7-zip over Seattle. Six-yard run by Don McCauley. He was my protege when I re just before I retired. At the 30-yard line, second down, still virtually 10 yards to go. They may have lost a half yard. Bo Rather, top of the screen, you see Greg Ladder, number 88, the big tight end. At the bottom, Brian Bashnagel. Give to Harper, and he tries to break it. Had he, looked like he had a lot of running room, but looked doggedly, like, the Lions held on. It looked like a sucker play almost to me. That was Doug English, the former Texas All-American, who held on along with Jim Mitchell, and now it's already a third down again. Third and eight. Orvis is coming out. Ed O'Neill, number 55, will check in. You see him just walking into your screen. The Lions have a lot of people who can play, and they move them around on that defense. I'll tell you what, you keep people fresh. On a day like today, it's a muggy, hot day out there. You're going to lose 10 or 12 pounds out there playing. you got to keep fresh. Third down and eight. Avellini to Payton. And Peyton just can't get the corner turned, and it's a fourth down. Charlie West, Paul Newmoff, that was just excellent coverage that time by Detroit. Good defense. Peyton got a couple good shots on that, too. Fourth down. And Bob Thomas is going to attempt a field goal. Boy, this is a big, this is a big play. This could really put Chicago right over the top here, if they can get this, get that 10-point lead. They need it. Well, he missed a 40-yard field goal attempt in the second quarter. This time, he's going to be booting a 43-yarder. A 43-yarder Five minutes, 14 seconds. Ryan Bashnagel a hold. Here's the kick on the way by Thomas. Looks good. And it's no, no good. It's wide left again, but there's a flag. Wait a minute, we have a flag. A flag at the 33-yard line, I believe. It's going to be roughing the kicker. All right. That'll be an automatic first down. Roughing the kicker is the call against Detroit. Oh, boy. That's a tough one for the Lions, who looked like they were going to have the ball with over five minutes remaining. Automatic first down on roughing the kicker. That's a heartbreaker. Running into the kicker. Here's John Musso. And Musso may have gotten a yard to the 20-yard line. The Lions have made it tough. I'll tell you, the Lions are playing good defense right now. They just can't make these big mistakes. So just outside the 20-yard line, John Gilliam now replaces Bashnagel at the wide receiver spot. You know, it's interesting. In the first half, the Bears had 180 yards rushing. This half, 59. They've had to work for everything they've gotten. They sure have. I think there were some adjustments made in 
at halftime. And, and Detroit's coming out. He, they've played a, a great second half here. Back it down nine, just short of the 20. Avellini to Harper. And Harper is hit and hit hard by Paul Newmont. The veteran from Tennessee brings up a third down. Now the crowd booing. They think they're maybe too conservative. But what do you do in a situation like this? I'll tell you one thing. I'd like to take that three points and sit on it. I'll take it. <laughs> He can get that field goal in there. You go in there, you know, with four minutes left to go in a ball game, and you got a 10-point lead. I, you know, I like those kind of odds. Just outside the 20, another third down. If they don't get it, Thomas will be called on again. Now Thomas has missed two today, so he's got to be a little shaky. Uh, I'd be yelling and screaming at him if I were on the Detroit team. Noah Jackson 65, Piper 53, Reeby Story 69. There's a get a Musso, and he hit head on with Lazelbeck. Lazelvik helmet to helmet on that play and here comes Bob Thomas again on a fourth down. I think uh, Pardee is just playing a conservative. He's keeping the ball right in the middle of the field. It's a running play. He's running a timeout. There's three and a half minutes left to go in a ball game. I think it's a good coaching move. Fourth down seven yards to go and Bob Thomas has missed a 40 yard attempt a 43 yard attempt which was of course not counted because he was rough. Well now attempt a 36 yard That's him. He's got a chance to be a hero or a bum. That's right. 306. Here comes the snap. The kick underway. And that kick is it's good. good. <laughs> Bob Thomas looked like that ball was hooking on him, but he got it through. And Bob Thomas has given the Chicago Bears a 30 to 20 lead with three minutes, one second left to play. Well, Tom Maddy, well, look at that time of possession. Nine and a half minutes on well, that last drive. That's what you have to have, and I think that was Jack Pardee's strategy was eat that clock up. Here's one of those knuckleballs. Randy Rich going to bring it out to the 10-yard line, to the 15, carrying that ball in one hand, and he's coming outside with it all the way out to the 35-yard line. There's a flag throw. You could see the wall over there. Looked like he almost broke a long one. Steve Schubert making the tackle for the Chicago Bears, but yet another penalty play. Yet another penalty is right, and it's going against Detroit again. It's, you know, they've just been... They've been plagued by it. They have been plagued by the by the, the big mistake. So this is just a young, aggressive ball club. You know, and they, they've, got to, they've got to rectify these kind of things if they want to be back in there in contention. You know, if you're a coach, this is the thing that breaks your, breaks your heart. Well, the discussion still going on as Landry now with 251. And Greg Landry, the old veteran he is, has got that two-minute offense, I'm sure, ready oh. to go. I believe that's going against Chicago, Tom. Yeah, I think okay. they were offsides. On a kicking. Offsetting penalties. We had an offside oh. on the kickoff and a personal foul against Detroit, so we'll forget that play even was underway. We'll do it again. At the 35-yard line, again, Bob Thomas will kick off. Next week, Detroit will meet New Orleans. They have two games at home. The Bears, boy, a tough one next week. They That's go to right. St. Louis to meet the Cardinals. Oakland, oh. San Diego. Oakland's out in front already in the first quarter, 7-0. Landry in this game, Tom, has 15 of 23 completions, 223 yards. I'll tell you, he hasn't got anything to be ashamed of about with those kind of stats. Well, he threw for 2,000, over 2,000 yards last year, and he's off and moving this year. Now we have a new kick return man. James Hunter has come in now for the Detroit Lions. He's the deep man. Thomas hits it, and it's going to go to Hunter. Hunter at the three-yard line. He's up to 15. 9-4 speed, and he makes it out to the 21-yard line. He's smart getting out of bounds, stops that clock. Got 2.42 left to go in this ball game. This reminder again to our Chicago viewers, because we were able to bring you the Chicago Bears home game today, the second game of today's doubleheader on CBS will not be seen in Chicago due to the provisions of the CBS NFL contract. But you people in Detroit in that viewing area will see a game coming up between Dallas and Minnesota. And that's a big one to both concerns here. Last check, Vikings leading in that one, seven to nothing. Here's Landry back to throw. He's down by 10 points to David Hill. Hill out to the 20, 25, and boy, is he a big guy. He brings it out, 28. He's just stepping over people. I'll tell you, he is a big man. I don't think that weight in the scorecard is exactly what it is. That's a program weight. They say he's 220, but he looks more like about 235 and can run like a deer. 
He last year was a second round draft pick out of Texas A&I. Well, they've had some good ones coming out of that school. All and lost a game in an eon. He was an all rookie tight end last year. Second down and three. Landry again with two minutes. This will be the last play before the two minute warning. A flag on the play dumps it up to Horace King. He's got the first down to the 35. But a flag is thrown and Ben Dreith is going to indicate holding I believe against Detroit. He will. She was. Holding against the Lions. So the two minute warning is here now. As the score here at Soldier Field. The Chicago Bears on their way to a victory here leading by 10 30 to 20. Ten years ago, no one knew me. I was part of the famous no-name defense. Then we built our reputation by being fast. Now, I don't want to lose that. I drink light beer from Miller because it doesn't fill me up. It has a third less calories than a regular beer, and it tastes great. Now, everyone knows me. Hey, I know you. You're, uh, uh... Uh, Nick Bonacani. No, that's not it. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Want to cut your fuel bills? Whether your house is new or old, put insulation everywhere. It can save you money. Your attic. You need a 6 to 12 inch blanket of Pink Owens Corning fiberglass. Walls. Full insulation. Unheated crawl space. Insulate below the floor. Live where it's cold. Insulate basement walls. See your Owens Corning fiberglass supplier to learn all about insulation. Insulation is cheaper than oil. Well, Craig Hertwig was the one that was guilty of holding on that last play to bring it back. You know, in this game, Greg Landry has thrown to seven different receivers. Leading receiver, as far as yardage is concerned, is Dave Hill. He also has the most catches, four for 55. Bussy, two for 47. Landry having quite an afternoon, 16 of 24, 230 yards. He's there he is talking it over with his troops. Let me tell you one thing, and he's one of the old pros. Just like at halftime, he moved his team right down the field. You know, they get that uh, seven or a three point, seven or three points here. They try that onside kick, they could come right back. Two minutes exactly remaining in the game. Second and 13. They have Jarvis, they have J.D. Hill flanked out on the near side of the field. The two tight ends are back in the backfield. Landry, look out, here comes Reitholtz, and also Jim Osborne. Boy, there just wasn't any chance on that play, all the way inside the five. When you bring those two tight ends in, they're, you know, blocking from the, like a halfback position. They're not used to picking up those linebackers. And Chicago has come up with the idea now that what they're going to do is they're bringing their linebackers to the inside in here. And they're just coming in blitz. You can see the two tight ends coming in. He comes in free, Scott Free. Osborne and Reitich. Well, that Reitich looks bigger than 257, too, doesn't he? Third down now, 26. That's the sixth sack for the Chicago Bears. Last year, they had 49. Landry again. Horace King. King's going to get out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Long ways to go yet. They got to go all the way to the 31-yard line for a first down. They're going to come in with their punting team. 132. Well, you hope for a mishandled ball. That would, of course, what Detroit's thinking about. Jack Party. You know, if I were, if I were Party right now, I'd have the deep man right on the line of scrimmage and let that ball roll around. Don't even take any chances. There's your time on the lower right-hand side. 1.32. Mitch Hoops to kick. Another low snap. They got to fix that up next week. They're having a tough time with it. Back is Schubert. Tough catch. The 40-yard line. Leonard Thompson after him, and he goes nowhere. That was a tough catch. That was. So with 1.22, 30 to 20, the Bears lead the Lions, as we'll be back with a conclusion in a moment. Europe's most successful new car in history comes to America. Introducing Fiesta, now imported from Germany by Ford. Fiesta, it has power that took it from zero to 50 in an average of 8.8 .8 seconds. Front disc brakes that brought it from 50 to zero in an average of 3.3 seconds. And excellent gasoline economy. Fiesta, Europe's most successful new car in history. Test drive one at your authorized Ford dealer. 
Cicely Tyson for Color Track by RCA. My rose is red, my skin is dark brown, and my dress is bright orange. If these colors don't look right to you, you should know about Color Track from RCA. Getting the color right is what Color Track is all about. It actually adjusts the colors and locks them on track. Before you see the color, the Color Track system grabs it, aligns it, defines it, sharpens it, tones it, and locks the color on track. RCA is making television better and better. Well, there's the old man of that Chicago Bear defense, Doug Buffon, in his 11th year, and it's warm down there. He's battled all the way back after being knocked out last year in the second game with torn Achilles tendon. First down, 10 for the Chicago Bears. Abilene off to Walter Payton, and Payton adding some more yards to that impressive total that he has out to the 39-yard line. Now here's a time when you just put both hands on that ball. There's our producer, David Fox. Our man in the box. All right, <laughs> and directed by Chris Erskine. Ah, uh, these guys did a great job today. So should producer Phil Ruskin. Good job, man. Thank you. Thank you. Also want to give credit to our spotter, Bob Brennan, and our statistician, Dick Bossing. Good job there. Second and nine. <laughs> Second and nine with 113. Now, Avellini coming over. The Lions asking for a timeout and getting it. Avellini will come over and talk to 65-year-old Sid Gilman and 41-year-old Jack Party. Boy, this Party, third year. When he was hired, he was the youngest coach coming out of the World Football League. And I think it's interesting, Tom, that many players that he brought with him from the old World Football League. That's right. He had an insight on some of it. There's Jim Osborne. There's some tired football players down here. You're darn right. This reminder now, next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the Trenton 150. That ought to be a dandy. Mario Andretti, Tom Sneva, who's already clinched the 1977 USAC driving title. Gordon John Cop, who won the event last year. It was rain shortened, but be with us next Saturday for the Trenton 150. There's a delay now. Peyton bringing it outside the 40 to the 41-yard line. They're just eating up the clock now with a minute four. Cover that ball. That's all he's got to do, running out. Now Detroit's hanging in there. I'll tell you, they don't have anything to be ashamed of. I think Landry played one of the best games that I've seen him play. I was, you know, he's just got, to, he's got the timing. He had the, uh, he's got some great receivers. I think they've got to maybe improve a little bit on their offense. But the thing that turned this game around was the big play. Well, Peyton's 73 yarder yeah. just pivoted the whole thing. Yeah, and the punt return. Yeah. But at that time, remember, the fans were upset. The Bears oh. weren't moving. Oh, yeah. Third down and seven. Here goes Roland Harper. Breaks the tackle by Weaver. And look out. He may go. And he's to the 40-yard line. Charlie West eventually got him over there. But it was Charlie Weaver that he ran out of the arms of to advance the ball to the 40-yard line. You know, Harper's had a very good day. 18 carries, 91 yards. <laughs> 91 for him. Let's see now. Walter Payton has 161 yards. Here's Look Harper. Again. Here's Harper. Again, giving it that second effort. The, the play that has been so effective today for Chicago is his draw play. He just busts through the middle, breaks a tackle, cuts back to the inside, and he runs for daylight. And this big guy's got a lot of speed behind him. Well, again, I want to remind you, next week, week number two in the NFL, Atlanta and Washington, New Orleans and Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis. Well, the way the Bears are moving the ball in St. Louis, that could be 90 to 98. <laughs> Giants in Dallas, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, all right here on CBS. We continue to bring the NFL all the way to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. 13 seconds remaining. There's Buffon discussing the situation. There's got to be one happy ball club, I tell you. Craig Clemens, former University of Iowa standout. He had to be happy about his alma mater yesterday, defeating Iowa State in the first meeting in I don't know how many years, 47 years maybe. At the 40-yard line, that's Fashionagle, number 84 at the bottom, top of the screen, Bo Rather. First down at the 40 of Detroit. And Avellini's just going to pounce on the ball. So we're having the verdict decided here in this black and blue division. And it bodes well for this division. It's going to be quite a year in the NFC Central Division. Green Bay playing very well in New Orleans. 
these two fine football teams on their way on the way back. And they're going to challenge the Minnesota Vikings. I think both teams will. I don't think Detroit has anything to be ashamed about today, and they play good ball. And I think they're an up-and-coming young ball club that's going to win a lot of games, Gary. All right, 30 to 20, Chicago defeats Detroit. This is Gary Bender speaking for Tom Matty. Now stay tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station.